Anything done from love and pure intentions will always prevail. I said that to set the tone of this video and to clear the air. So let me explain this. To help the younger and unexperienced new artists that aren't ready to deal with this type of musical administration stuff, nobody was there to give me specific advice or a second opinion on this specific metadata ordeal. And I did ask around, but well, sometimes, you know, uh, we have to learn things the hard way. So what happened was, we were very clear about this. I'm talking about myself and the collaborator. She would very clearly put my name on the cover art images for all three tracks we did together. All three of them. With my artist moniker clearly on them which is fine and nice. The next important thing and that most people will identify with is the naming of the tracks, which also show Discal Remix, although they have a small spelling issue because the L at the end of Discal was supposed to be a capital L instead of a lowercase one. All fine and dandy. So now we have the art and we have the titles, which seems all very beautiful and nice, you might say. Then I was very kindly advised to make a PRO account to track the performance of the music. PRO meaning Performing Rights Organization. But here we have a few loopholes, which involves the PRO only covering a specific region or only a specific medium, such as radio, for instance. Anyway, here comes the most important part. After all these uh, initial steps before sending everything out for distribution, which is mostly all digital now, to Spotify, iTunes, and other streaming portals, to name a few, is tied to an application form that is populated with metadata or metadata, however you want to say that. So if due credit is missing from this form, it means that whatever gets distributed out to all of the digital platforms through the distributor's channels will be missing the crucial tags that point back to the people involved in the project. Basically, denying an artist their recognition on a project. And yes, I repeat the word artist, because according to the distributor's website, in my case, includes the following roles. Primary artist, the main artist that is performing on the track slash album. Featuring artist, the artist who is a guest feature on the track slash album. Composer, the person who contributed to the music, lyricist, the writer of the words, producer, the person or persons in charge of a recording session or who create the musical tracks that support the vocals, remixer, hear this now, someone who creates a new sound recording by using elements from pre-existing tracks. My point being, that one could add more than one role for themselves, but lawfully, without denying any project member their due rights. Now, I can, but won't be technical, because in reality, I was denied credits on music I crafted around acapellas, meaning that I received no stems or samples of music other than the vocals to work around. which is great. It's uh, one of my traits since I was younger and I've always worked with what little I had. So MPC users will understand this. Like drum machine users. So regardless of the track titles and naming or the cover art, if I were to be technical according to the distributor's own website, 
This means that I was composer and producer before ever actually being a remixer. But let's not go there because I only ever agreed to remix these tracks, which actually overperformed their quote unquote original versions. The tracks I'm talking about only show up in the main artist's Spotify now, or the primary artist. And Spotify is pointing me back to the distributor, which was filled in by the primary artist I trust in and remixed. So, according to a well-known producer friend of mine in the U.S. and international house music scene, it's either about self-publishing or going through a record label. But when a label is run by the same primary artist, run or co-run, then it's obvious as to who's responsible for submitting the information to the distributor, which, like a chain, will provide information onto the next stage in the process. With all due respect to everybody's age, and I say this from the heart, with all due respect to everybody's age, stature, godliness, love for music, and human collaboration above all, it's okay to ask questions. Ask for credit where it's due and ask for clarity because that's what communication is. Music in itself is a form of communication between people, right? Now, I'm not here to point fingers because this video is a truthful explanation for those to stay clear of the metadata trap. A trap that doesn't even need to be set up and can happen simply because of misinformation. But when somebody gets all defensive about requests or around questions, well, that's a big, big red flag that shows rigidity and disapproval. Basically, problems down the line. There's so many dynamics involved in relationships between people, but information should be simple and clear. Thus, the metadata application form. And it honestly shouldn't be such a paranoia trip for anyone to edit such a tiny yet sensitive piece of information. Bottom line, the remixer is an artist all the same. If you buy a CD, you'll even see the names of the mixing engineers printed out. CD meaning compact discs for the the digital only people or physical copies as they call them in the gaming world. Thank you for listening.